Hi, and welcome back to the Cortina build. I'm Jim. Um, so, moving on from when I actually got the car moving under its own power, I've been sat in here just now writing this list of stuff that I can see that I need to do to get the car finished. Um, it's a mix of really intricate stuff like painting some of the seat bits or um, painting general brackets and fitting them right up to doing the headlining and um, making the car run a bit better because I'm not quite there. Um, I'm not going to read all this out because it's going to take forever and it's going to be really pretty boring. Um, plus then I'm going to be showing you some of it, which is awesome. Yeah, I'm not doing it. Looking at the list though, there's quite a few things that I could hit quite easily with the parts that I've got, like um, straight away looking at it, I've got fuel pump wiring to tidy up and finish off and the wiring for the uh, fuel tank sender, both in one spot, could do it quite easily. Um, so I'm going to work through this list, find some easy ones that I can get done, um, and then some of the bigger bits like obviously the headlining, the boot seal, uh, the door seals, I'm going to order them today um, in a bit, get those in and maybe have a look at doing them, I don't know. Um, I can't really do the doors till the door's done, um, but having them here is a bit of an incentive to just, let's just hit some stuff and get it done. So without further ado, boot wiring. This shouldn't take too long, it's for the fuel pump and for the petrol gauge sender. Um, Got to feed it through one of the holes in the floor, just work out my lengths, and then give it a quick wrap. So then that way I get fuel and a rough estimation of how much is in the tank. But uh, at the minute I know it's empty because I used it all running it. Another pretty big step for me at the minute is um, actually having the door skin fitted. The first body, the body shop that painted the car annoyingly decided that um, they didn't want to do the door skin or they couldn't do the door skin. Um, either way, they uh, left me high and dry with it. And then I've been struggling to find somebody else who would take it on. Quite a few body shops. Um, were keen to start but just wouldn't follow through or you know just sort of let you down um really annoying actually because uh it's i couldn't do anything else without four doors you can't drive with three you know it's not like a ups van um but finally that guy who's been doing body body work for about 40 years and he's thrown the skin on it he's had it for just over a week done it in between jobs so i'm going to throw it on the car now do a test fit uh to the best of my abilities because i'm not the best at getting panel gaps perfect um we'll work out what work needs doing um you know to get that fit perfect and then from there he'll take the shell Oh, sorry, take the whole car, actually. I forget it's not a shell anymore. Um, paint the door inside and out. And there's a few little, there's a few marks on the body that I've made, you know, chips as you fit and stuff. It happens. So you can blend those in. Um, the intention is also that I'm going to order the door seals and we'll get those done at the same time. Because if you're sorting the, the fit of this door properly, doing the door seals at the same time actually should really be done and after the <laughs> my issues with the boot seal uh, I think that's probably for the best but 
very quickly, you've got, if you can see that, you've got these three here and four more at the bottom. And they saw a little bit of the up down, but then also outward and inward. And then you've got a bit of adjustment on the B pillar itself. That makes it go forwards and backwards and a little bit. All right, so uh, I'm going to try and do this on my own um, and no doubt see how it fits. The other thing I've done, I um, don't know if you can see, but just up here, is I've put some tape around the edge to make sure I don't knock any more paint off than I need to. Right. Let's have a go. So this is the first fit. I actually, we've got a height difference between front and back, but I think the front door is actually slightly too high looking at it. Um, we've got a pretty good fit there, but if I bring it round a bit, you can see this edge needs a bit of work. So that needs to come in. And then we need to come in here. Fairly consistent. It's quite tight on this edge, so the door could do it maybe moving a tiny bit forward to bring this gap in a bit closer. Frame gap, okay. But it looks like it needs to go up, but we can't go up because of this piece here needs some work. So we knew this the skin was gonna need a bit more work because obviously the shape of it and how it all fits with the, the door, it just needed to be on um, and it's centralized so um, to, to the rear frame. But so that'll get sorted before it gets painted. So I'm not too worried. So currently we have this lovely piece of wood holding the boot open, which is less than ideal because uh, that thing's weighty. What the factory fit are these hefty springs, some lovely uh, rubber boots, and then they go on there and then up onto the hinge. So that once you open it, it'll actually lift and then hold itself. So another quick win that I needed to sort was the horn. These are the original ones. I've got another one somewhere else, but you have two notes, high and low. They were pretty quiet when they were on the car um, and I just can't get anything out of them anymore. So something's a miss inside, but I'm a bit concerned that if I break it apart, that won't get them back together and working. So I've been out and got, so it's the same story. You have two notes, apologies. You have a high note. And a low note. But when you combine them together, You get the dual note, and that's really handy if you want to call somebody a, uh, or, a or if you just fancy a. Me personally, I like to go for a long note. Um, sometimes I use hand gestures or um, pretty colourful language. 
next step is get it on the car and um, that's great another thing off the list Morning, it's uh, 6 a.m. I'm down at the garage doing a couple of little jobs. Um, another quick one I managed to do, I've completely forgot about this, sand deadening for these doors. Um, because I had to replace like the lower few inches of these doors, I had to take the sand deadening out um, of these panels. So this stuff I bought off eBay, it's like two mil thick, bitumen based. A little bit skeptical, but I will show you how it works. Put one panel behind the new reskin door, and this one I'm yet to fit. So, what's the difference? That's the difference. That's so when you shut that, it's not going to resonate. See how. It's amazing how a piece of bitumen that big makes a difference. So I'm going to put this on. I'll show you again. Because when you shut it, you can hear that resonance. Give me a minute. So it's completely ruined that sort of bing resonance noise. Fascinating. All right, now I've done playing with that. I need to go over and do the other two. Um, and uh, there you go. Keep your bitumen if you want a comfortable car. So I've got the HT leads on. Um, the one I've just made those in a recent episode. So if you haven't seen it already, please check that out on how I made those. And then I've also picked this up off eBay. It's Timar Timavo Timavo uh, air filter. They do or they did uh, loads of tuning bits for Webers. By the looks of it, I found this on eBay. It looked a bit scabby when I bought it, and the air filter is definitely going because that's it's seen better days and it's also way too big for this but it's a really cool period tuned piece um one thing i do like about it i certainly know what they were doing is underneath here just above the chokes it's actually shaped so it's almost creating like a uh, um venturi trumpet affair so that might be why it runs a little bit nicer but uh yeah, it's, I'm really happy with this. I mean, I've thrown some crackle black on it, which I think made it look a lot nicer and it matches the uh, rocker cover now. I think overall, the look of it is pretty happy. I'm really happy with how it is. It's got this wiring to just tidy up here for the coil. And I need to get on with the alternator wiring. Um, but by the looks of it, that's a bit too short. So I'm gonna have to probably take this off um, and run new wires, why, run new wires to it when I can get my words out, and figure out the right way to wire the alternator up, because currently we're not putting anything back into the battery, which is a bit of a problem. I'll come on to that though. So I've got the passenger side doors done, and now I need to do the driver's side. So that means we're going for a little drive. I take the car out onto the drive. I'm going to do what feels like a 300 point turn and then put it back in so I can work on the driver's side. Stick around, it's going to get interesting.
a new latch on so that when I close my glove box now, it does that. It actually stays there. So I'm pretty happy with where I've got to. Uh, I'm going to end this one here because I could keep going for ages. Um, but I think I've got hit a couple of good bits, got the car running a bit nicer. Uh, the HT leads look awesome, um, which I know I did them in a previous episode, but definitely check that out if you haven't already. The air filter seems to have helped quite a lot and generally pretty happy uh, all around. Like having opening and closing doors is um, that actually shut properly is, is a big boon. Uh, and I'm just so happy to actually have that back door skinned. No, I've got to get it painted um, and it should be going on the 23rd. I need to ask about that because I know with lockdown happening, I need to chase that one up. Um, but I'm going to end it here. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you haven't already, please uh, subscribe uh, to my stuff and give me a like or just get in touch. Really uh, like hearing from, from you guys. Um, so with everything that's going off in the world, I hope you're safe, hope you're well, and I will see you soon. Bye for now.